Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a book review on a latest release from Craig DeLui, and this is How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive. I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird. I've had this cough that I literally cannot get rid of for weeks. Um, and now it's just really starting to affect my voice, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna power through this So how to make a horror movie and survive is the latest novel like I said by Craig DeLui This came out just a couple of months ago. If you are not familiar with Craig DeLui He did write episode 13. It's probably his most well-known work at the moment I read it earlier this year and I was intrigued enough by it to continue to want to read Craig DeLui's work um, so this is the second book that I have read from him, but I will say I did have my fair share of issues with episode 13. Um, this one I've got some similar feelings on as well. I'm going to read the back of the book. I don't think I'm going to do spoilers for this one because I really don't feel like I need to. There's no big like twist um, that comes forward and there's no like things that I feel like I need to pick apart at the end. Uh, so I think it's just going to be more of like a generalized review, but let's read the back of the book and Maybe I'll change my mind. <laughs> Max Maury should be on top of the world. He's a famous horror director. Actors love him. Hollywood needs him. He's making money hand over fist. But it's the 80s and he's directing cheap slashers for audiences who crave only more blood, not real art, not real horror. And Max's slimy producer refuses to fund any of his new ideas. Sally Priest dreams of being the final girl. She knows she's got what it takes to score the lead role, even if she's been cast in only small parts so far. When Sally meets Max at the latest rap party, she sets out to impress him and prove her scream queen prowess. But when Max discovers an old camera that filmed a very real Hollywood horror, he knows that he has to use this camera for his next movie. The only problems are that it came with a cryptic warning, and sometimes it howls. By the time Max discovers the true evil lying within, he's already dead set on finishing the scariest movie ever put to film. And like it or not, it's Sally's time to shine as the final girl. Okay, so I thought the premise for this was really, really cool, and I greatly, greatly, greatly enjoyed the setting. I believe it's 1989 Hollywood at the height of the kind of slasher boom and the, the sequel franchising of great horror uh, franchises like Friday the 13th um, and uh, Halloween. It's a very, very interesting take on Hollywood at that time, but I will say a lot of this novel suffers from the fact that this is more a novel about the industry at the time and making a horror film than it is actually about horror. And I think that was my biggest issue with this is it's almost 400 pages and it's really not until the last quarter of the book I would say that you get a lot of true fast-paced horror. And then before then, you just get a lot of, like, build-up with some kind of disturbing and creepy scenes scattered throughout. A little bit of cosmic occult world-building that is very creepy, and I will say, well done. Um, but for the most part, it really just kind of felt like a novel about the film industry, and I kind of feel like that's almost what Craig DeLouis wanted to write. We get a lot of depth in our main characters, especially Sally Priest, as well as Max, but also some of the minor characters, like the producer Jordan and one of Sally's co-stars Claire who has just the most cliche dialogue throughout this novel. She's like the the punk rock character and I say punk rock in quotation marks because literally she just felt like such a stereotype and she even like spoke in like song quotes and like just idioms and sayings that oh just felt so unrealistic um, and again, just kind of like a caricature of what a 1980s punk rock actress would be. Um, so there was that that I just had to point out because when they go to the punk show, it was just so cringy. So, 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 so cringy. Um, and I'm a huge fan of like punk and hardcore shows. Like, I love going to them. I love having characters that represent, um, those types of people. But this one just felt very much like a caricature. Um, Sally, too, kind of felt like a bit of a just like somebody trying to fit into the mold of the struggling actress. She very much is a very, very strong lead, but I did have a lot of issues with her in which I felt like Craig DeLouis wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with her. Um, he has a lot of commentary and like very funny lines on like the concepts of method acting um, that Sally is very 
vocal to say that she does not do, and yet as you read her character uh, throughout the story, I definitely feel like she is molding herself after the roles that she wants, and that kind of goes with the different hair styles and hair colors that she's depicted having in the novel. Fun fact for anybody, and especially in the 1980s, you cannot go from dyeing your hair red to dyeing your hair to platinum blonde to dyeing your hair to super dark brown within the course of like four weeks. That's not going to happen. You are not going to have hair. It is not going to look good. That was like just like mind boggling to me. And this is just so like, I imagine Craig DeLouis has never dyed his hair from red to platinum blonde to black. Um, but I read that and I was like, there is no way this actress is doing that. Like absolutely not is that happening. Like get this girl a wig because she does not have hair after that bleach job. Um, but again, just little nitpicky things for me. Um, but yes, I found this book interesting and I really liked reading about the industry and you can tell that this is definitely a love letter for uh, the 1980s Hollywood industry and it has a lot of commentary on whether horror should be considered highbrow art film or not. Uh, I think today in 2024 we can very clearly say that it absolutely can be considered a highbrow art form. Um, but in the 80s, it was definitely difficult to argue that. And then you look at all of like the big A-list actors who got their start working in horror films. You look at like Johnny Depp and Kevin Bacon, who were in uh, The Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th, respectively, you know, like, and Jamie Lee Curtis, Oscar award-winning actress, star of Halloween. Um, so there's definitely that commentary to be made in this, and I did enjoy that. But for the most part, I just felt like this novel was really trying to just talk about film and not so much focus on horror. Which leads me to talk about Max. Max is kind of the the director who will die and is willing to kill for his craft. The kind of mad genius who takes things too far. And I kind of liked the setup for his descent into madness. I just felt like it went from 0 to 60. Like there wasn't enough build up to get to him becoming this crazed horror movie director, horror movie director, um, and that kind of bothered me. I just needed more from him. And then, like, they kind of set it up where, like, he's like, my only real friend is Raphael, and then Raphael has this kind of crazy, like, character flip, um, where he kind of goes from being, like, just, like, a normal average dude to kind of having all of these vices that come out, um, from him later, which kind of also was like, ooh, maybe Max isn't really, like, a stand-up guy from the beginning. Maybe he's always kind of been a scumbag, because now Raphael is showing, like, his true colors, and he's always, like, working and manipulating with Jordan, and he's working and manipulating, uh, Dorothy, and there's just a lot of, like, moments where, like, it's hinting that maybe Max wasn't always a good dude from the beginning, um, but the progression to get there doesn't quite happen. Um, Trigger warnings for animal uh, harm in this novel. There is animal harm in this novel. Um, I didn't love reading about it, but I wouldn't say that if you are triggered by those things, you should not read this book. Um, there is kind of a comeuppance, and there, there, there is a haunting by said harmed animal. Uh, that I do think is justified and well done, and you can tell that Craig DeLouis does love and care about uh, animals. It's not written in a way that I felt was done for shock value. It is written in a way that helps build a character in a story arc. Um, so that is there, just so you know, but um, wasn't super thrilled with reading it. And then we get to like the ending. So a lot of this novel is a shit ton of buildup. <laughs> Like, just a lot of build-up and a lot of going into how this movie is going to be crafted, and of course this kind of occult backstory. You get a lot of backstory on Max as well as Sally as our leads. Um, and then you get this final quarter of the novel where the kind of actual horror movie takes place. Most of the book is about, like, funding and producing and writing and getting it all built up, and then we have the actual filming of the horror movie for the last quarter of the novel. It was such, to me, like, a letdown because there's so much that's built up on it and then so much that either happens off-screen or far away that, to me, it was just, like, what was the point? If everything we're building up to is about these moments, why are some of them happening off-screen? 
Um, and what do they mean in relation to the final conclusion of the novel? Because I found the final conclusion of the novel to be very, very, I don't want to say bleak, but dark in like a darkly humorous kind of way. And again, it's just this other it's just another style of commentary on the audience as a whole, very, very akin to the commentary you'll see in Cabin in the Woods, if you've seen that film. Um, and I just found it, again, kind of like laughable and bleak and weird all at the same time. And I think that was the point. But I just don't think it landed to the... I don't think it stuck the landing in a way it needed to, to justify so much build up to such a condensed final act. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This was a three star read for me. I did enjoy reading this book. I, I will say I did enjoy reading this book. I like Craig DeLuey's writing style and I appreciate his love for Hollywood horror filmmaking. You can tell he did a lot of research, a lot of research to get this, uh, to get this churned out the way that it is. It, it's very informative on how these films were made and produced and funded and the whole like shebang behind it, the whole just collaborative effort behind it. He does so much research into it and I really, really appreciate that. I just feel like it, this movie is about how to make a horror movie and the and survive is the afterthought. Um, and I would have liked to know more about the occult nature of the camera utilized throughout this entire novel. I feel like it's hinted at quite thoroughly, but it doesn't quite actualize itself um, in a satisfying way to the reader. So we also have so many throwaway characters that are literally just here for like shock value of like the quick kill or whatnot. Um, and I just didn't feel like that was the way to go. I felt like those characters needed to be fleshed out a little bit more because they're kind of just like enter stage left, exit stage right. They're just kind of there for that moment and then brushed aside. Like a few of them actually served minor plot points um, and pushed the plot forward slightly, but they're really just kind of there out of convenience. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I wanted to, I really wanted to like it. I loved the concept, but it just, it just didn't work for me. This would have been so much better literally if it was just a novel on like how to make a horror movie in the 80s. Like I think that would have been really, really cool. But the adding the occult elements and the survival practice and making the last half like very much a horror story just didn't work the way I wanted it to. Craig DeLuey is always killing me with like these great concepts that he just can't figure out how to formulate towards the latter half of his novels. That was my problem with episode 13. That is a large problem that I have with this. And he's got a lot of unlikable characters paired with very likable characters. Like, I really did like Sally, but Max I just couldn't even connect with. Which reminds me a lot about the main couple in episode 13, too. So he does have, definitely has similar character dynamics. Um, even though, I think her name was Claire in episode 13. Max, I don't think, is as unlikable as Claire to read about. Um, you at least kind of understand his motivations a little bit more. As this, like, kind of psycho mad genius versus Claire, where she was just ego-defined. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. Three stars. Wish I loved it more, but I did not. As always, I try to post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.